Exist Stars and Scopes with your friend Uma. Updated every new and full moon with guidance based on planetary transits in the current sky and extra support from tarot. For accuracy, take a look at your rising sign first if you know it, and do feel free to listen to your sun, moon and rising if you'd like the full picture. If you're interested in your birth chart, check out the readings page at umaruby.com. And if you'd like to support the work, head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and you can buy me a coffee. Finally, if you're a visual learner, look up Uma Ruby Tarot on YouTube and you can watch and learn. Okay, let's take a look. Hello Pisces and Pisces Rising. Welcome to your horoscope for the full moon eclipse in Taurus happening on the 8th of November at 2 minutes past 10pm if you're in the southern hemisphere with me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, Jennifer, if you're watching, I just got to say I love you so much and I can't thank you enough for the beautiful shout outs that you've been giving me. You have eclipsed my ninth house of publishing and spirituality and mind expansion and magic. You have really done that for me. You've activated the physical manifestation of the astrology and I can't thank you enough. It's been wild. I'm nearly at a thousand subscribers and not that I do this for, you know, that's sort of not the aim of the game, is it? And the message is always find the folks that need them, you know, and that's the way that we know how this magic works. The overwhelming tidal wave of support and love and and beautiful messages and new connections that I've received because of your recommendation, because of your faith in my work, Jennifer, has been just wild. And it's been playing out to the astrology to a T. So thank you. <laughs> um, to all of my other Pisces, I know that Jennifer's a Pisces sun, not a Pisces rising, but there's information for both of you in here. So welcome to this reading and welcome to this uh, preparation for the next eclipse that is happening in Taurus that will be activating your third house. The third house is where we find our neighborhood, our village, our language, <clears throat> the way that we can communicate with other folks. That can incorporate our brothers and sisters. It doesn't have to, but really if you think about the disparity or the difference between the ninth house which is about travel and seeking out the world and mind expansion and publishing and, and the loftier sort of forms of communication that we can call in and learn and teach about. The third house is much more localised. It really does have a lot to do with the neighbourhood and the village. So this is where this eclipse will be happening. Now I want to cast your mind back to November the 19th and April the 30th. So that's November the 19th of last year, so about a year ago, and then April 30th of this year. These points were two eclipses in Taurus. <clears throat> so there was a lunar eclipse in Taurus on November the 19th last year, and then a solar eclipse in Taurus on April the 30th of this year. Two moments of shedding, two moments of kind of an influx of a surge of welcome, and then a letting go of something else. So. I wonder, now if I can speak from personal experience, because you are my Pisces crew, and I, you know, I'm a Pisces rising, I can look at those dates and I can be like, oh yeah, I moved to the country, and then I moved back in those two dates. So it's sort of, yeah. Uh, November the 19th, I signed a lease to live in the country, and then April 30th, I moved away from that address. Bam, that's my village, my neighbourhood, eclipsed, both times. Part and parcel, done and dusted, there you go. That makes perfect sense of the astrology. Also, <clears throat> my language and my confidence and my my ability to learn the language of this stuff was growing and was sort of hit peaks and troughs in those periods of time too. So that's two examples of, of a third house eclipse. And that's just from my experience and that's, you know, I'm the reader so I can make it all line up. 
But I wonder how this might play out for you. And I wonder if you think back to those two dates, November the 19th, so a year ago, and then maybe six months-ish ago, and think about your neighbourhood, think about your village, think about your uh, language, you know? What came like a bolt out of the blue? What was the turnaround, a, a really a big shift in geography maybe? And that could be, doesn't have to be physical. Could also be with the with the way that you are delivering information that's been given to you. There's something maybe of like the grapevine about the third house that can definitely crop up. Think about the bitchy twin of Gemini. Gemini rules the third house and the natural zodiac. So think about that. Well, I didn't hear it from me, but la 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 la. Like there could be some sort of like grapevine gossipy stuff that's going on. I don't know. But look, from, from what I see from the intuitive tarot Pisces, it's painting a much more positive picture. I will show you the tarot card for 16 degrees of Taurus. This is where the, the lunation is happening. So 16 degrees of Scorpio is the sun. 16 degrees of Taurus is the moon. In a direct conjunction, like hand in hand, exact, with Uranus. Now, the Uranian energy, that revolution, has been lingering around in Taurus for some time now. If we think about, <clears throat> on a global scale, that's not just an individual birth chart or a birth chart specific to a rising sign, globally, that's when we look at the natural zodiac, when we think about world events. Aries in the 1st, Pisces in the 12th. That's the, that's the rhythm. That's, where the, that's how we find each of the zodiac signs playing out their best highest octave in the house they're most comfortable in the second house is taurus's house that's the, the land that's the earth that's the ground so think about that uranian revolution that's been in there for ages the earth's been telling us you can't live like that anymore you can't do that sorry you can't exploit my resources like you have been doing for thousands of years anymore you can't do it. That's um, that's a way of explaining this Uranian energy in the in the in Taurus for all of us. There's a square happening, so a right angle, a pressure point, with the Sun, the Moon, up to Saturn in Aquarius. Now this has happened for us before at a couple of different lunations over the year. This one isn't exact. It's a couple of degrees off, but it's still an echo. It's still a reminder, a rem really a reminder of this friction between Saturn boundaries in Aquarius, which is the collective consciousness, and Taurus, the land. So collectively, we can think humanity is going under a period of restriction and boundaries setting because the Earth is revolutionizing and telling us that we need to get off or take care of her. That's one way to look at the zoom out, to zoom back in <clears throat> to a Pisces rising chart. Aquarius rules our 12th house, which is our access to the high priestess and what's beyond the veil, our dreamscape, the unconscious mind. So there's a boundary here, there's a restriction here, there's also a test, is what I see. There's definitely, because think about it, Saturn is at home in, in Aquarius, they actually thrive there. They've got, they're of great benefit to the Aquarius philosophy, is rules and restriction and test, you know, testing the metal. So I feel that at this eclipse with this square, this pressure, there's a test of will that's, that's playing out in your access to the psychic uh, mystical realm, Pisces, where you love, and your village, your neighbourhood, the way that you're maybe translating that information to. Square is a pressurised... Uh, uh, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. A square is a pressurised... Um, aspect but an eclipse pulls the plug on that for some in some way so i almost feel that there's going to be like a deluge of like i don't know what kind of work you do pisces if you're 
like, or, you know, you're obviously here reading tarot, so you're into it. Access to spirit, access to the 12th house, the other realm, the 12th house that we naturally sort of, you know, we lord over. We're good at the 12th house. Um, we know that we have access to everybody else's consciousness in that space. I feel that at this eclipse, there's going to be another power outage and how you are translating that information, how you're putting the word out there to your, you know, maybe not your neighbours, you don't have to tell your next door neighbours, but, you know, the people in your neighbourhood, the folks that you hang with. There's going to be, something's going to crop up here. I hope this isn't too, I think I've gotten myself um, a bit self-conscious because I'm excited. <laughs> But let's have a look at the intuitive tarot that I picked you because I'm using this as a basis for this as well. So I got the Sun, the Queen of Wands, the Six of Wands, and on the back of the deck I got the Three of Cups. So I see here a great big like celebration doubled over and a reunion with like maybe like energies past or folks that you've maybe not been so neighborly with or they haven't been in the village or they haven't been in your environment. Um, because you've been busy elsewhere, but there's something of like a coming together. I feel like a really big group of people, maybe not big, but like a, an, a, a, an important group of people are coming together, like-minded souls are coming together and expressing and sharing and uh, sort of evolving, you know. <laughs> I feel it. They're like ascending in a beautiful chorus together. I've got the two of ones on the back of the deck. And this energy is about the portal. It's about the gateway. It's opening that door and stepping through with your crew, with your hard work on your back, you know, like with that, that sort of celebration of the commitment to this quest this Queen of Wands here, I love this. There's a there's a fire queen in your corner. There's someone in your periphery of Pisces. There's someone around you that's real beautiful and real confident and real chatty and great at connecting and like networking and that sort of thing. They're working their magic and they're sort of lining up this and that and the other and they're bringing it all together into some beautiful... I see this, yeah, there's a real collaborative feeling that I have here. And this, this queen supports your work. They think that you're really coming from <clears throat> the right space. They think that what you have to say, third house, what you have, what, how you've translated the information and how you share it with your village is remarkable and they can't wait to support you in it. The sun here, I mean, this one's probably for my Pisces sons too, because let's, you know, your sun is in Pisces. If you're a, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a Pisces sun placement, that means that the, the sun was in Pisces at the time of your birth. And right now, Jupiter, the like fairy godmother, like happy auntie, supportive, supportive auntie of the Zodiac is what I see Jupiter as the one that is like cheering you on every step of the way. Jupiter's just re-entered Pisces. So I don't know if you've been feeling it, but like it was since the 31st, I think, of this month. It's only fresh, but there's like an added emphasis on optimism and expansion in the Pisces sign. So if you're a Pisces rising, that's your sole purpose. If it's you're a Pisces sun, that's your very identity. That's the part that's most visible of you. So there's an extra emphasis of goodwill and good fortune and support here for you Pisces, whatever it is that you're doing or trying to communicate or engaging in, in that way, like you're on the right path and the sun says it and the queen of wands definitely says it. And there you are on your victory lap being cheered on in this little moment. It's not going to last forever. Nothing does. But there's this moment of, ah, oh, yeah, I did that. I worked my butt off. And I'm coming together with, could be new folks, you know, could be folks that you've not met yet. But there's definitely a celebration that I feel. And it has a lot to do with what you've learned from 
your unconscious reality, what you've learned from dreamland, spirit land, whatever you like to say, but like when you close your eyes and you go to sleep, where do we go? What connects us? How do we, how do we read tarot cards? How do we read energies? How do we, you know, have that feeling that we're being protected and guided by angels? That's all got to do with the 12th house. And there's definitely been a restriction there for you. There's been a limitation, but you've been, there's been, there's been a rule book in some way, a cosmic rule book, a spell book that you've been checking and rechecking and you've been, you're being protected in that space that you can really go there and you can really go to the unconscious realm and bring back the info and share it with other people. Oh God, Pisces, this was lovely. I don't know. I hope it works out for us. <laughs> I hope that, um, you know, I hope I don't get kicked out of the village again. Oh, we'll see. Um, maybe I'll find a new village. Who knows? Uh, much love to you. I love you dearly, Pisces. And thank you again, Jennifer, for all of my new pals here. This has just been so nice to line up with all the different Pisces and all of their different colours and styles and shapes and flavours. You're all so welcome here. And I love you for everything that you bring to me and my comment section and my vibe. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, head to umarubi.com, yeah? You can book a fire reading, a water reading, an earth reading, an air reading, or a spirit reading. We work with all of the different elementals in my birth chart readings, and I use tarot too. I incorporate the tarot in the way that I translate your chart, uh, and it's work that I'm very proud of, and I can't wait to share it with more of you. If you're a return client, if you've already had your birth chart read by me, I've just published uh, another addition to the readings page. It's called The Witch Reading. And we use your birth chart just as extra flavor in the background. But I sit down and I read you tarot cards for an hour. You can ask whatever you want and we can delve into the intuitive aspect of this side of stuff. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be speaking to you in two weeks for the new moon in Sagittarius Pisces. So this is an active activation, a moment where we get to call in our next stage a next journey in our career our most public self our legacy so we get to work some magic with that one um, i really look forward to it sorry if this reading was just a bit overexcited i just got really overexcited <laughs> yeah that's how it is <laughs> i love you i'll speak to you in two weeks bye pisces thank you for being here thank you jennifer <laughs>